In the three years of the pandemic between 2020 and 2023, there were more than 30 million excess deaths across 125 countries. Now, we've been led to believe by the authorities that there's one obvious cause for this, but the authors of a brand new study call this into question. They explicitly say that the data do not support the theory that a viral respiratory disease could account for all of those deaths. So the question we're left with, what was the real cause? This thing is 521 pages long, and it was reported on extensively by Children's Health Defense. Now, let's look at what they found. So over the three-year period, they studied the number of excess deaths, meaning more people dying over baseline. They looked at this in 35% of the global population. That's approximately 2.7 billion people. So the number of excess deaths, meaning people who shouldn't have ordinarily died uh, from all causes, was about 31 million people. So you all know the conventional narrative. However, um, the authors highlight some pretty large inconsistencies in that theory. First of all, one of these inconsistencies was that looking at the pattern of deaths with a viral pathogen, according to the authors, you would expect a gradual uh, increase over time as a virus spread through a population. However, what they found instead was that immediately after certain countries had implemented um, or declared a pandemic, you saw massive spikes, massive surges in deaths. Um, this is not really to be expected. What this ultimately suggests, according to the authors, is that the response may have actually been one of the main culprits uh, rather than the pathogen itself. Now, another problem they found was significant variation in the rate of mortality across different places and different political jurisdictions, some of which were extremely close to each other, like on each other's borders, okay? So just to give an example, you might have two different countries bordering on one another. You may have two states or even two counties, and each of those um, implements different measures, protective measures, they say. Now, um, what they find is that in one of those areas, the death rate is very high, another one is very low, and you can't necessarily explain that via the spread of a virus. Um, that's not to say that the virus is not spreading, but the fact that there's loads of deaths in one place and not many deaths in another place when they're so close together means that it might not be the virus that's actually responsible for those deaths. Like they say, this is not compatible with the ordinary spread of a pathogen, which essentially doesn't understand the concept of borders. So according to the authors, once again, this is further evidence that the reason for such high death rates in certain places may not have been due to the pathogen itself, but because of the measures which were put in place. Now, to give you some examples of this, let's look at medical practices which were uh, implemented for these patients. One of those was intubation. They were given oxygen directly into the lungs. Now, it was shown that giving oxygen to someone with this particular kind of condition, well, it's one of the worst things that could occur because it caused massive oxidative stress and essentially causes lungs to shut down. Um, and so in many cases, the intubation itself, which was a medical treatment, was actually killing many people. Likewise, there are certain medications, which you probably all know of, which were allowed in some places and banned in other places. And so patients simply were not being able to have access to a medication which really worked, and they were being given something else which actually uh, reduced the likelihood of survival. Now, another really interesting trend that they found was there was a high variability in deaths within each country over time. So for example, some places had no excess mortality for over a year, and then all of a sudden they had an unexpected surge in mortality for no identifiable reason. Now, with the spread of a pathogenic virus, you would expect to see a gradual increase over time and then weaning down as a patient becomes um, immune to that. They develop immunity. However, um, that's not what you saw in some places. And of course, many of these surges in excess deaths also coincidentally uh, occurred after the administration of a certain medical procedure, which we all know about. So according to the authors, all of these factors combined disprove the theory that these excess deaths were solely due to a viral respiratory disease. Just to summarize the key points in this paper, well, 
As soon as some countries declared a pandemic and started implementing all of those really strict measures, um, they saw massive surges in mortality. Other countries that didn't do that didn't see the same level of mortality. Next, they found massive differences in the rate of people dying um, in places that were very close to each other. So there would be super high deaths in one political jurisdiction, and then just next door, there would be very few deaths. And finally, as opposed to like a gradual increase over time in all of these different, different countries, they found that there were really random surges, some super high at some point, and then low, sometimes no deaths for over a year, and that can't be explained via the natural spread of a viral pathogen. So according to these authors, all of these findings combined are basically sufficient to disprove this theory. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it wasn't a killer, because clearly it was for some people, but something is wrong here, um, and there are other causes. So in this paper, the authors argue that there were other factors, obviously, responsible, um, which looking back, we, we all know already, and we can appreciate. Uh, of everything they, they found, they identified two factors which were strongly associated with excess deaths. One was the proportion of elderly in a community, and another one was the number of people living in poverty. Now, importantly, they go on to say that these two groups of people are going to be the most vulnerable to external changes to society and to medical practice. So obviously old people are more likely to die, but old people are also more likely to be coerced into accepting medical treatments that they may not necessarily know anything about. They may not have a wide support network and they might not have the time or inclination or energy or brain power to be able to research any kind of in intervention. So they are quite vulnerable. Think about the people who are on a low income, okay? They have been placed off work. They're stuck in lockdown. They're not getting paid much. They can't work from home. They can't order food. And ultimately, they have to pay month by month. They're basically living pay to, pay, paycheck to paycheck. So many people were really struggling to make ends meet. And this is a kind of underlying low-level stressor that is always going to be there for someone who is struggling to put food on the table. And people were put through it for years, okay, for years. And people were isolated in their homes alone. They weren't able to see their friends. They weren't able to socialize. Many people lost family members and ultimately, um, that is a major cause for what the authors in this paper call biological stress. And this leads us to their hypothesis of the real causes of those deaths. So they, they've laid out three causes which they think could account for uh, the vast number of people that did pass away during that time that are not likely due to a viral pathogen. So first is gonna be biological stress, which they say encompasses psychological stress as well. This is from the mandates, this is from the lockdowns, all of the crazy stuff that they put people through, pure evil what was done. The second is gonna be interventions, medical interventions, which were not shots, um, but w which were uh, the mechanical ventilators, the intubators, giving people oxygen, we spoke about the problem with that, but also with um, drugs which were uh, not very effective, which sometimes worsen outcomes, but which people or some people were making massive, massive, massive profits from a massive amounts of money. And so these were pushed on the population when there were more effective and safe uh, drugs available. And finally, the certain medical procedure that we all know about and I've spoken about at length, but I'm not going to talk about in this video. So according to these authors, these three factors, which were basically all avoidable, which were completely unnecessary, these three factors potentially contributed to the death of over 30 million people over those three years. Now, the truth is we don't know how many of those excess deaths were because of a viral pathogen and how many were not. However, they make some very good points in this paper and they highlight that probably a really large portion of those people shouldn't have died. So if you wanna learn more about this, highly recommend checking out the paper and you can read uh, the article which covers the basics. I'll link that in the description below. Ultimately, who's going to be held accountable for this? Who can we thank for this?